Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa, ko koutou tatu mai nei, te rongo i tatu korero i tēnā wā. Hello, hello to everyone basically is all I said. <laughs> and welcome, and thank you so much to everyone here. Um, it's a real honour and a privilege to be here today to be able to present about my country, my culture, and my, I guess you'd call it unique world views, um, to do with water. He wai, he wai, he wai, he wai, he wai, he tangata, he wai, he ringa whenua, he wai ora, he wai rua, ti he wā mauri ora. See, every day we're surrounded by water, it, it's all around us, water is the thing that joins us together. Water lies in between my country and this country, the Tasman Sea is what connects us together. Water is what necessitates the land, it is the soul of life, and through water, there will be life forever. But what is water, or in my language, why? What is why? We commonly think of water in this industry, in the water industry, as three waters. Storm water, waste water, drinking water. We also consider water being fresh water, Sea water or marine water, but also groundwater. But water is much, much more than just this. As you can see on the, the far side, it's much, much more than just water. In my culture, our indigenous perspective of water is that it was created at the beginning of time. It was created, it was at a time where we had Rangi Nui, the Sky Father, and Papa Tūmaku, the Earth Mother, now sandwiched together like this. Now, they, we consider them as the, the Atua of time, the, the beginning, the parents of everyone. Everyone has a genealogical link to them. And they're all together like this, and it was very sandwiched. And you can tell, you know, if you were a child in that environment of those two parents, It'd be dark, it'd be damp, you know, you wouldn't like it very much. So what happened was, one of their sons, Tane Mahuta, the god of the forest, decided he had had enough. He pushed his parents apart, thus creating the world we live in today, Te Ao Marama, the world of light. Now what happens when parents are separated? They start to weep. For each other. And we call that Nga Roimata o Nga Atua, the tears of Rangi and Papa. It doesn't take long for us to figure out what those tears are. From the Sky Father, the tears, the rain, or what we call Uwai. The tears of Papa Tonaku. And now Punatapu or Papatunaku, the weeping springs that come out of the land. The waterways are the bloodlines, the capillaries, the veins of the Fenua, a mother. And at the end of the streams, or sometimes for we'll use in a, um, in a stormwater capacity, we'll design wetlands which act as the kidney which filters out contaminants and pollutants. These arts were, they, they wept for each other so much that they created the vast ocean that we know today and the many waterways that surround us. From them, water was given life. Everyone here has been given life through water. Water is the life giver of all things. Each of us here are made up of water. Around 70% of us are water. Therefore, we are water. I am the water. The water is me. I apologise for this slide if there's anyone here who's offended by it. I, I deeply apologise. When a, when a woman is pregnant, 
the first thing that happens when she goes into labor is the water breaks. Those waters are, um, are, are not back to letting you know you're weeping for Papa Tonaku below. Those tears were meant for Papa Tonaku. That's what we believe what the, the breaking of waters are. The second thing that happens that comes out is a baby. One, two, sometimes more. And the baby comes out. But the baby is also water. So the first thing that comes out of a, of a human is water and then water again. The next thing that comes out is the placenta, or what we call the whenua. There's no coincidence that what we call the land in New Zealand also is called whenua. We typically take the placenta and we give it back to the land. That's showing our connection to the land. That's showing um, Papa Tonaku that we care about her, that we love her, that we will protect her. So, ko wai koe, ko wai o, ko wai aho. Who are you? Who am I? I am water. See, these are how I see the world. This is how, in my culture, how we see water as it is. It's not, and if you see here, it's not storm water, it's not wastewater, it's not drinking water. It's all waters. We are the water. We have many significant sites in New Zealand, or even where, where we are around the world. But they're all related back to water. We have the sky. The water comes down. The rain comes down. We have Mona or mountains, the headlands of the catchment. We have our Wanui, the forests, the, the pervious services. We have our rivers, our streams. We have our towns, which are always connected next to water. Out here, the city is based around the river, the rivers, and also the sea. And if you're lucky, next to a lake. My ancestors came to New Zealand and they, they got there through a canoe. So they traveled the ocean to get to my to, to, to Aotearoa, New Zealand. And when they got there, they set up meeting houses or meeting complexes. And they're always situated next to the water. That's how my, that's how important water is to us. The way I look at water as I think of ki uta ki tai, from the mountains to the sea. So that's talking about a catchment, that's a holistic view of a catchment, really. We think about the rain coming from above, ngā roi mata arangi, and ngā puna tapu a papa. They go into fresh water, they travel over the land, they go into fresh water. We have an atua or a deity that looks after this fresh water. His name is Maru. And he looks after the water for us. He is the kaitiaki or the guardian of it. The protector of it. Then we've gone and built our towns. In places where maybe we shouldn't have built towns. In flood zones. In places that the land activity has changed so much that we have impervious services and high high sediment generating activities going on, all adding to the water, picked up by the water as it travels over the land and going into our fresh water. Perhaps it could be polluted water, perhaps it could be um, so polluted that it turns the water dead or no longer able to sustain life. We also have Waitai, salt water. And our deity that looks after the sea is Tangaroa. Who's seen Moana? Anyone seen Moana? You've probably seen and heard a lot of this, yeah? Moana? Yeah, I wrote Moana, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but the Moana is the sea for us. And Tangaroa is the, the deity or the kaitiaki of the sea that, that looks after the sea and everything in the sea. But then we also have another deity, the Tafiri Matia, who is the, the deity of wind. Ngā the four wind, the four winds, north, south, east, west. Does anyone know what he might be in charge of? Evaporation. 
It looks after the water as it returns back into the skies. Then we also have Tane, who looks after Te Waunu Tane, the great forest of Tane. And for us, he looks after transpiration. He's the one that looks after all the plants. He's the one that brings the water from the land, from his mother, and gifts them back up to the to Tarangi, to his father. But it, for us, it looks like this. As engineering professionals, as water practitioners, you know, this is just a water cycle. But you can see here, it's not too different. If anything, it's the same. But we've got away from looking at water and respecting water. When we think about water, we tend to look at water management, environmental management. But I, I tell you, it's not the water or the environment that is managing. It's us, the people, man energy, people managing. It's us and our behaviours, our changes that need to change. So think, now more more why. These are our types of water. Like I said, why water? Water from the purest. Water that, that is pure, that is healthy, that is life-giving. It's water that comes from above, from Anginui, like water that comes from below. It's the water that's inside all of us. That's why water, the purest water you can get. We also have why Māori, fresh water, ordinary water, water that runs free or unrestricted. That's the water that runs in our rivers, in our creeks, in our streams. It is the water that we're drinking on our tables. It's water that is fit for human consumption. And we also have white kino, polluted water. Water that's been so altered because of all these pollutants. But water that can harm humans. So this is white kino. Bad water. Polluted water. Untreated water. Then we have Waimate, which is water that is no longer able to sustain life. In fact, it is water that takes life. So we've done this by being on this planet. The actions that we've done have caused this in some, some aspects. But it's not all doom and gloom. We can still have fun with Waitai as we go and have a surf. You know, we go go to the beach and have a play. That's what we think of when we look at water. Yet we sometimes ignore all the all the other consequences of what's upstream. When it comes to our projects, we tend to be so focused on our projects sometimes that we forget about this holistic catchment. We forget about what's happening upstream and the consequences that will happen downstream or their adverse environmental effects. <coughs> when we think about water. It has a life force, it has its own entity. For me, we can use Modi, which is defined as the binding force between the spiritual and the physical realms. It is the life force that, um, or life sustaining uh, capacity, that is in everything and can support everything to live. If, if none of us, all of us here have Modi, and if we didn't have Modi, we would pass away. Consider it like, if you've seen Transformers, the spark. You know, if you don't have the spark, you'll perish. But water also has modi. We go from why water, and from the top, there's the purest modi, the healthiest it can be. And we go down, and then why modi? Why modi is the water that we use. So it has to be good, it is healthy. It's healthy for the, the animals that live in it, it's healthy for us who use it and eat the animals as well. Or use the resources as well. But if we, if we keep tainting it, we get down and it'll become really harmful. Harmful for us, harmful for Papa Tomaku, harmful, harmful for the environment. But we can restore it through different practices of treating it, through respecting it, through giving it back to the land in a, in a healthy state. And thus it will return back to its purest motive. 
We call this process kaitiakitanga, or stewardship of water, guardian water, being a custodian of water. It is our duty as people to respect water, to look after water. Because water really is a resource. It is a gift gifted to us from future ancestors, future generations, for us to ensure that it's healthy for the next generation. You know, it could be as simple as if putting in a swale just for treatment. You could even put in a bioswale. You could look at different options, wetlands and, and, and dry bioswales. You could even do a wastewater treatment system where you, you're respecting the water as it goes through the land. Starting from the top, filtering through, the, through reeds going to uh, water channels which are collected together and passing through rocks which are filled with Bodhi. And then going over a waterfall even where you can aerate, aerate the water. So in the bottom you can have tuna, eels, coda, crayfish, ikka, fish living there, which is a sign of the ultimate healthiness of water. This is actually a project which is going ahead in Rotorua to replace a an aging wastewater treatment plant. Well, this is the, the, the tertiary treatment component of it. So we will also have um, prep sediment chambers and, and the like clarifiers upstream of it. Because at the end of the day, kaora te wai, kaora te whenua, kaora na iwi. If the water is healthy, the land is healthy, we, the people, are healthy. So the challenge to use today, and the challenge we've faced in New Zealand, is that we cannot not ignore different viewpoints. We need to have diversity. We need to be. We need to include different um, thoughts, processes, ethnic groups, indigenous knowledge, and in everything we do. Otherwise, we're just going to continue down the same track, which isn't working. We need to connect people back to water, back to the land, back to, to a state of healthiness. And we can easily do that through ways of showing where water is, no longer burying it in pipes or day, um, well actually daylighting streams. We can put it in, incorporate it as part of playgrounds, so we can use it as a teaching resource for our kids. A tamariki of tomorrow. We can incorporate areas where they can go and play in a safe environment and touch the water, which is in a healthy state. These are all ways we can connect back to water. We can put in systems which, like rain gardens, which fill up in rain events, and you can actually see the water. You can acknowledge it as you're going past, and it can also be a sign of. Um, ancestral waterways which once flew in those areas but are now covered by pipes, like in this example. So we have to protect this land, the water and the environment for the generations to come. The good thing is, is like this is happening now. In, the, in my um, city of Auckland that I live in, we put water at the centre now. And yesterday we were dominant over water and the resources. Everything. Man was dominant over it. People were dominant over it. But now we put water at the centre and acknowledge the life supporting capacity of water. And if we are to survive, and our future generations are to survive, we need to protect and enhance it. So we put the Modi of the Wai, or the Modi of, of all the waterways in Auckland at the forefront to make sure everything is healthy. We give authority back to water. We recognise it as an entity. We give it a voice. So we can maintain a state of health, take care of all our life, and not restrict it in any way, but let it do its thing. But it's a very holistic way of thinking. So in conclusion, the actions that we have affect these inactions, the effects of there's always a consequence. So it's for us in this room today to be the leaders of tomorrow. 
and promote change. Incorporate your, your views into your work and reconnect the water so it may be healthy for the future generations. Ka hore aha e hangatea e puta noa mai rānei. Kia noho wehi i tēnei ao. Ako mata ngaro ka moe tea te mauri. Nothing can merge that was ever created to exist in isolation. Even the invisible may be, may be detected by its impact on something. On that note, I just wanted to acknowledge Oswater 19, WSP Opus, and the Australian Water Association for giving me this honour to present to you all today. And I just want to thank all of you here uh, for listening to this, this presentation. And I look forward to meeting each and every one of you today and during this conference, and also learning more about your your career as a progressive. Namahi nui kia